welcome back students in this lecture we will see more examples on solving problems using slope deflection method okay so let's straight away go to a problem here so here we have a two span bridge fixed on the extreme right corner and other two supports are simple supports right the important point to note here is here we have a support statement thing as well as the flexure rigidity is varying from 2EI in the first span to the 3i in the second span the loading is simple one is a udl throughout and the other one is a point load at the center okay so the first thing we have to do is you have to find out the friction moment so before that the value of vi is also given here so you can find out the you should keep the equations consistent and find out the value of ei so ei is 200 gigapascal which is nothing but 200 into 10 raised to 6 10, no, kilo newton per meter square which is giga pascal means it is 210 raised to 9 newton per mm square so 1000 newton per mm 1000 newton is 1 kilo newton so you convert that so that is 200 into 10 raised to 6 kilo newton per meter square okay multiplied by 50 into 10 raised to 6 millimeter raised to 4 it has to be converted into 15 into min, meter raised to 4 which means that you have to multiply it with 10 raised to minus 12 so if you do that i becomes 15 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter raised to 4 so multiplying you have ei value is equal to 10,000 kilometer kilonewton meter square okay so next step we will find out the fixed end moments for the span a b and b c so the fixed end moment at a m a b and the fixed end moment at b in the span b c m b c is going to be a uh, anti-clockwise moment which means that, that is those are going to be negative and the fixed fixed moment m b a and m b c are going to be clockwise which means that those are going to be positive you could use the for, for point load you can use the formula pl by 8 and for udl you can use the formula ql square by 2 so substitute the length and the loading value you get fm values the non displacement here is rotation at c is going to be zero as well as the vertical displacement in a and vertical displacement c is going to be zero however the vertical displacement at b is going to be delta b is going to be 10 millimeters okay so now the slope reflection equation for this uh, spans so we have two spans which means that there is going to be two into two which is four slope reflection equations so before that you should see the what happens due to support settlements at B so when support B settles down the support AB rotates as shown here which is actually the entire beam rotates clockwise okay which means that both the thetas are going to be positive as well as the delta value is also going to be positive with this delta value is nothing but difference in vertical displacement of at a and displacement vertical displacement at b so a is zero delta a is zero delta b is 10 which means that delta is going to be 10 but with positive sign okay when b settles downward for the sub second span b c you can note that from the initial position which is this dotted line the entire beam rotates in the anti-clockwise direction which means that the theta at both ends as well as the delta is going to be negative here also delta is going to be difference between settlements, when, uh, settlements at b and c which is 10 minus 0 again so here the delta is going to be negative for, so when you are substituting in the slope deflection equation for span a b delta is going to be plus 10 and for span b c delta is going to be minus 10 millimeters okay so you have to substitute that in millimeter meters actually so it, you should convert this 10 millimeter into uh, meters which is nothing but 10 raised to minus 2 meters okay so you write mab is equal to 2a by l into 2 theta a plus theta b minus 3 delta by l so here theta and theta b are unknown and theta c is 0 delta values are already known here fm values you have already found out so you should substitute and find out all the slope reflection equation for support moments mab mba mbc and mcb so once you do that the next step is you 
write all the joint equilibrium condition so the first joint equilibrium condition is going to be this one it is a simple support outer most one so mab is going to be zero so from slope reflection equation mab was this so this is equal to zero simplifying you have a relationship between theta a and theta b theta a plus 0.5 theta b is equal to 3.875 into 10 raised to minus 3 so this is the first equation you have in the second joint equilibrium condition we are going to use is the sum of moment support moment set b is going to be zero because it is a intermediate sim roller support so here sum of active moments is going to be zero so mba plus mbc is equal to zero so this is going to be the second joint condition so substituting mb and mbc from slope reflection equation and simplifying we have another relation between theta b and theta a these are simultaneous equation okay so you can solve those and find out what is the value of theta and theta b once you get the value of theta and theta b you can go back to your slope reflection so m a b is a simply supported moment so it is obviously going to be zero m b a can be calculated and its value is 9.705 which means that this is a anti-clockwise moment because the sign convention is a b active anti-clockwise moment which is positive okay so m b c you can you can calculate and then c b also you can calculate okay once you get this m b c value you can find out the reaction and draw the bending moment diagram also so you can try this drawing this bending moment diagram okay now let's see one more problem so here we are extending the problem further from beams to frame but the importance of uh, or speciality of this frame is that this particular frame is a non swiss frame which means that this frame cannot move horizontally okay because it is restrained by the support the fixed end moment support at this point and the hinge at this point doesn't allow the beam to have a horizontal displacement okay so this is going to be a non swiss non swiss frame in the next lecture we will see more about sway and non sway mechanism for time being you can understand that this is this particular frame is a non sway frame because the support settlement supports are such that it doesn't allow the entire frame to move or displace horizontally okay now the first step as usual will be to find out the fixed end moments so here also please note there is a change in i value which means that flexural rigidity value will be changing from one member to other and here for span a b we have an eccentric loading so we have to use p a b square by l square and p p a square by l square for finding out the fixed end moments and this is a udl which means that you can use w l square by 12 for finding out the fixed end moment okay for span b d we don't have any member loading so there is fm is going to be zero the non displacements are displacement vertical displacement at each of the joints are going to be zero because there is no support settlement given also there are restraining the vertical direction okay and the rotation at a and rotation at d is going to be zero because those are fixed supports okay so next step you can write out the write down the slope reflection equation so there are three spans and for each span we can have two slope reflection which means that there are total six slope reflection here relating giving the value of each of the membrane moments so substitute theta a equal to zero theta d is equal to zero theta b and theta c is unknown and delta values are everywhere going to be zero okay also please note be careful while substituting the i value because there were variation while in i values also okay so note down the slope deflection equation once you get the slope deflection you should move on to the joint equilibrium condition so the joint equilibrium condition which can be applied is the upper support last support was a simple support so joint c was a simple support so mcb is going to be zero okay so that is one equation so from slope duplication you can write on mcb is equal to zero so we can get a relationship between theta c and theta b okay next up uh, you can say that the sum of all the moments at the 
intermediate support which is B is going to be 0 which means that MBA plus MBC plus MBD is going to be 0. So substitute all value of MBA, MBC and MBD from slope deflection equation and obtain a relationship between theta B and theta C. So we have two simultaneous equations. Once we have two simultaneous equations, you can find out the value of theta B and theta C. Okay. So once you have theta B and theta C, you can substitute this back in the slope deflection equation to find out the all the support moments. Okay, so we have MB is equal to minus 7.78. So MAB is equal to minus 7.718. MB is equal to 3.763. Now you can use the sign convention to understand what is the nature of the moments. So these are reactive moments. So you can use the sign convention. RAN reacting and equipoise moments are negative. So wherever we have negative values here. So here, here and here and here. All these values are going to be negative. So once we have that, you can draw the bending moment diagram also. Either you can find out the reaction and draw the bending moment diagram or you can use this particular method which is shown in the diagram here. So this is nothing but superposition of bending moment diagram. So this 7.7172 is nothing but this 7.719. These are the support moments or fixed end moments. So mark all the fixed end moments as negative sorry whatever the value are given and this triangle is nothing but the simply supported bending moment diagram given for the given question so for span bc which has a udl so we have a parabola so this is a positive parabola here in span bc okay and for span ab we had a point load which means the bending moment simply supported bending moment diagram is a triangle is having positive value. From that we have to subtract the fixed end moments. So fixed end moment at A was 7.712, fixed end moment at B was 3.76. So you superimpose that and you can draw the bending moment diagram here. Okay. Thank you. That's that's it for today's lecture. In the next lecture we will see how to solve frames with sways. So thank you.